Are you struggling with the inconvenience of your bike? Or are you worried you'll find your pride and joy has fallen over, lying on the ground, broken, damaged, and scratched? I was, until I discovered these hacks that totally transformed the way I use my bike every day and how I work on it. So in this video, I'm gonna show you five insane and maybe slightly ridiculous hacks that will save you a lot of hassle and could even prevent serious damage to your bike. Some of which may be common knowledge to some, but just might be a secret to others. Number five is my personal favorite and the one I use the most. I'm gonna be honest with you. Hacks are normally bullshit, but I do have a genuinely useful one for you that might just get you out of trouble one day. But first, a cleaning hack. Let me ask you a question. What's the worst thing about going out for a ride? Well, for me, it's other people, but also getting the bike dirty. And if you're anything like me, a clean bike is a happy bike. But the thing is, we can be very particular when it comes to just how clean it is. You know, it's not as easy as polishing a few fairings and calling it a day. I wish it was. God, I hate cleaning a bike. Big surfaces are easy, but little crevices aren't, and a bike has a lot of them. What you really need is the proper tools, things like this. They're perfect, but you might not have them. The solution? Well, this is a toothbrush. And as your dentist might say, it's time to get a new one. But don't throw your old one away because this is the perfect utensil for your pride and joy. It can get into all of the little cracks and crevices you've been staring at in disgust for months. Just make sure you don't get it mixed up when you come to brush your teeth later on. Ugh, that stinks, yo. I am a s and I consistently worry about my bike falling over. I will literally be lying in bed thinking, did I put the paddock stand on properly? Panic. And the same is true for when I park the bike literally anywhere. I'll have the most bizarre thoughts, like I wonder if the wind has blown it over, or if my side stand has snapped. Now, although these are ridiculous thoughts, I definitely need some sort of medical help. There are some instances that you do actually need to worry about this, like when parking on soft grass. You don't want the side stand sinking into the ground because, well, you know what will happen then. The solution? The most obvious one is to park somewhere decent. But if you can't for whatever reason, for example, some bike meets are held on grass, you can buy a little puck thing like this. But if you don't have one, don't fear. Before you leave, stash something like a little bit of wood or a jar lid in your bike to put under the side stand when you get there. Another thing that you can do in an emergency, although I'd only ever do this if the ground is dry, so it kind of defeats the purpose, but your gloves will do the trick. Of course, the downside of using your glove in an emergency is you could come back to find not only has your bike fallen over, but now you're missing one glove. So maybe just stick a lid in your stash unit and call it a day. Maintaining your bike is half the fun of owning one. Whether you're just checking the basics, doing a full service yourself, or even modifying it, it's great fun and very therapeutic. But it's very dirty, messy, and irritating, especially if you don't have any workshop or disposable gloves. And checking your chain is one of the many hideously greasy jobs. It might even be the case that you haven't checked it in ages and you just want to quickly check the chain before going out. But of course, you don't want to make your hands greasy as they'll be going directly into your bike gloves in a matter of minutes. The solution? Simply grab an appropriately sized spanner and use the open-ended section to grab the chain, moving it up and down without ruining your hands, or worse, your gloves. Of course, you could just use disposable gloves or even just wash your hands before putting your bike gloves back on, but Where's the fun in that? This is a helmet, and on said helmet is an visor. What does this thing do? Well, in some instances, it protects your face and eyeballs from flying projectiles such as bugs. The problem with this is that after a while, it gets absolutely caked in the car. For short trips, it's not an issue as you'll just clean your visor when you get home, the place where all of your cleaning stuffs are. But if you're going out for a long ride or if you're going on a road trip, you won't have that luxury. And without that, your visor will end up and your vision will be impaired and your helmet will look filthy, which of course is much worse than the whole vision thing. The solution? This guy. It's a tiny little spray bottle you can stash away in your bike or carry on your person when going on long rides or trips. That way when you're on your long road trip and you get to your hotel, you're equipped to properly clean the visor ready for the next leg of your journey. It will always be in reach when needed. Just make sure you bring a polished cloth or you'll be left with the hotel's bog roll. As we've discovered, we love working on our bikes. Whether you're doing simple maintenance or completely changing parts, you're gonna be taking bolts out. And I think I speak for us all when I say there's nothing worse than losing one. The irritation and anger when you come to put it all back together and you just can't find that one bolt. You literally spend hours searching every inch of the bike and the workshop just to find it's rolled under the tire. <sighs> Sometimes I genuinely think it's witchcraft. Huh? I put a bolt down, look away for only half a second, look back and the vanished. Gone, disappeared and never to be seen again. Or if you're working on a project and it's likely to take a very long time, instead of losing bolts, which could still happen, you might just forget where the bolts go. Huh? The solution? Well, if you're just doing a very quick job, flip open the fuel filler cap and pop the bolts in there. 
not actually in the tank, just on top of it. They'll sit nicely in the recess and will not vanish when you're not looking. But what you can also do is buy some Ziploc bags and chuck the bolts in there instead. This way you can label the bag so you know where these specific bolts go. The downside of this is your wife will f*** you up when she finds out that you've used all the freezer bags. <laughs> Picture this, you've spent several months saving up and now you've bought the exhaust you've always wanted. And the best part, today is the day that you get to fit it to your bike. You're incredibly excited to hear your bike's new symphony and admire its new aesthetic. And all you have to do is fit it. How hard can it be? Well, as it turns out, pretty difficult, but unexpectedly, the most difficult part might just be these guys. You see, in order to fit these things, there's a lovely special tool that grips the spring, allowing you to pull it over the other end. The problem being, you might not have one of these tools. And even if you do, I found them to be borderline useless. The solution? Well, it's a lot more simple than you may have first thought. Just use some string. Something that chances are you'll have lying around somewhere. And if you're really eager to finish off the install, you don't have to wait for the tool to be delivered. Just make sure the string that you're using is strong enough, otherwise you might send the spring flying. These hacks are mostly to help make your everyday bike life and maintenance more convenient. And this is important, but knowing whether or not you should warm your bike up is critical. And that's exactly what I'm gonna show you in this video here, where we look at the reasons why you should, but also why you shouldn't warm your bike up.